Welcome back. A woman's right to choose is under assault in many states in this country, and not all of them are deep red. The governor of Ohio just signed into law what is called the heartbeat bill, which makes abortions illegal once a fetal heartbeat can be detected. That's usually around six weeks, but could be even earlier. Six states have heartbeat laws and 10 others. They are working on them. Ohio's law already is facing court challenges. Already, courts have overturned similar legislation in both Kentucky as well as Iowa. Joining me now, president of the National Organization for Women, Tony Van Pelt. You know, in, in a few minutes, we'll go through all the various court challenges and uh, possibility, if not probability, that Roe will be challenged. But I think for a lot of people, they'll look at reproductive rights through the prism of the theoretical, that down the line this may be challenged. But explain for our audience that right now in real time across this country, whether it be through restrictions or in bans, um, like the heartbeat bill in Ohio or the six weeks bans that we're seeing in many other states, women's reproductive rights right now are under assault. That's right, and they have been ever since Roe has been passed and the Webster decision came down in 1989. And the, our real concern right now are these cases have uh, been bubbling up through the courts. These new laws are probably not the laws that are going to be challenged at the Supreme Court level, but the ones that are already in the pipelines that have been passed over the last decade or so. Talk a bit about them. Uh, I mentioned Ohio in the heartbeat. Um, uh, bill here. Uh, talk about what that would do. Um, obviously, it is kind of what it sounds like, but from a practical basis, you know, detecting a heartbeat, how far along is that for certain women in their pregnancies? Well, actually, there's not a lot of scientific data on that, and it is um, misrepresented, and it just depends on the woman and her pregnancy. Every woman has a different pregnancy, and some women, there might not be a heartbeat until eight or nine weeks. Some women, it might be at seven weeks, but there's no real uh, definitive answer to that question. That's one of the reasons that these bills are so very dangerous to women. You mentioned um, dangerous, and uh, I mean, you're much closer to it, obviously, than I am, but there seems to be a ramped up ugliness that has gone from what was a debate. Uh, we're getting you know, people who um, work uh, at these facilities, um, uh, you know, related to reproductive rights for women that are getting death threats and more. Uh, we referenced uh, an incident that happened in Virginia to a state delegate there. Talk about the climate that's out there and maybe not coincidentally how some of this is being fueled by some of the rhetoric from above. What's being fueled by the rhetoric from above and I think just in general um, the permission that has been given by our authorities to express hate uh, in so many different ways and we see this across the country. Um, in uh, religious facilities, at abortion clinics, attacks on doctors, attacks on state legislatures. Um, so it's, it's really a scary time. I entered the movement in 89, and at that time it was very scary, and we were having um, people chain their necks to abortion clinic doors. We were having actually our escorts and our doctors were murdered. We've had that going on over the years. And so uh, it, and then we passed the uh, Access to uh, Clinic um, Doors Act in the Congress face, was the name of the bill. And uh, that tapped down some of this real dangerous domestic terrorism that was going on. But now we see it coming back. You know, Tony, I talked about some of the restrictions, um, but there's also issues of availability. I talk about how in some pockets of this country, hundreds and hundreds of miles a woman would have to go to get a legal procedure. Yeah. Yes, it's really disheartening and it's sad. So there are a few states where there's only one clinic left open in the entire state. Uh, for instance, in the state of Georgia, out of 159 counties, uh, 79 counties don't even have OBGYN doctors, let alone f places, facilities where women can have safe, legal, and affordable abortions. Then you add to that um, the uh, state-sponsored rape with the ultrasounds that they are insisting that some women have. You add to that the three-day or two-day waiting periods that they demand. Um, it, it's really horrible what's going on in this country that, you know, the, the ugliness and the hate against women 
That's what this is about. This is about power and control against women, not allowing women to decide on their own destiny and their own happiness. Why is that? You know, Tony, we spoke at the top, I referenced uh, court cases, and uh, there was a Texas um, a court case that went before the Supreme Court, um, and it was struck down, but there were only eight justices then. Uh, as I understand it, there's a Louisiana case that's nearly identical to the Texas one that are trying to get heard on the high court again. The difference this time, obviously, is you have Justice Kavanaugh um, on the bench. And it almost comes down to one person, right. theoretically, Justice Roberts. And where will he come down on this? Talk about just how tenuous overall a woman's right to choose is, because we know conservatives have been itching to get a rehearing of Roe. Yeah, and it is, it's really, it's really tenuous. It's really scary because now we have a majority, we believe, on the Supreme Court, which is one of the reasons that uh, the current president is in office. He promised to put anti-abortion justices um, on the Supreme Court. And so uh, we are fearful that this will come up. Now, we know that the tactic is that the far right and the justices themselves have even expressed they're probably not going to completely do away with Roe. They're not going to overturn Roe, but it's a political calculus that what they're doing is chipping away, chipping away, chipping away at women's rights. So they're hollowing out Roe until we get to the point where women will not be able to access safe legal abortion. And the other thing that's really important here to remember is that our health care system around this country is being taken over by the Catholic health care system, and they deny birth control and abortion to women. So that's another avenue that really isn't being lifted at, up as a way that women are being denied reproductive health care in this country. Well, I certainly appreciate the time, and uh, as we say, we're going to keep our eyes on the courts and also the state houses here as decisions both local and national uh, seem to be in the offing, and obviously 2020, this once again, I believe, will be an election issue. Tony Van Pelt, thank you very much. Well, thank you for having me. Coming up next, we'll turn back to politics. Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York, well, he decided not to run for president. He may be second guessing that, but he wrote a fascinating op-ed piece where he asked 20 some odd probing questions of the Democratic Party as they get ready for 2020. We'll take a look at them and we'll have much more after this.